Okay, let's take a look at 10.77, and this is a stoichiometry problem um, involving both a solid and some gases in the product. The question says the explosive PETN is one of the most powerful explosives known. It reacts with the following balanced equation. And they gave you this equation. Notice that the PETN is the only solid, and that's on the reactant side and then it makes four different gases. And the question is, how many grams of PETN will react to fill a container that has a volume equal to 30 liters, um, as a, a pressure of 720 torr, and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the thing we think about is when we fill the container, this it, it uh, is going to give us all four of the gases. And so in a normal stoichiometry problem, we would want to know one of the gases so we could relate it back to the reactant and use the coefficients. But the nice thing about gases is that um, we can treat them either individually or as a group, as a mixture of gases. And all of the gas laws apply to both individual gases as well as to the group. So I have enough information here. If I know volume, pressure, and temperature, I can use the gas, ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, to, de to uh, determine the total number of moles that is in um, our products with the following conditions, the 30 liters, the 720 torr, and the 25 degrees C. So rearranging, I am solving for the number of moles, and so I get pressure times volume divided by RT would give me the total number of moles. So this is going to be the total number of moles. And so the pressure now is in 720 torr. I need to convert this to atmospheres. I'll just do it within the problem, but you could do it before you started. But I need to make sure that it's in atmospheres. So there's my pressure. The volume in liters is fine to use in the ideal gas law. Then there's R, and this is the reason that I'm looking at for the units, um, because the units of R that I'm using are liters times atmospheres on the top, on the numerator, divided by moles and Kelvin on the bottom. And then I need the temperature, and I am going to have to add the 273 here so that I can get this into Kelvin. Okay, so if I do this in my calculator, I get that the total number of moles is 1.16 moles. Now, um, because this is the total, so this is all of the gases together, I am unable to do a ratio of just one of the individual gases um, for example, to use the 2 in front of the carbon monoxide. Well, I can't do that. This, this number of moles is the total. So what I can do is I can, because they're all gases, I can add up all of the coefficients in the ratios. Because they're gases, we know that it is going to be proportional. So I'm taking, and let me just highlight here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these four coefficients on the gas side of my equation. So I have 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2. And so I have, in terms of a ratio of my gases, I have 11 moles. Now looking over on the product side, a reactant side, Sorry, I don't have a number here, so that's a 1. So the ratio that I can use for my mole equation is going to be 11 moles of my reactants 
to one mole of my product. So that's the ratio I'm going to use. I got the 11 by adding up the coefficients of the gases. Remember, gases can be used independent of one another or as a mixture. So then I'll take the total number of moles, 1.16 moles, that's my total reactants, and I will multiply them by the ratio, I mean, sorry, that's my total number of products. So it's one mole, and this is of my reactant, so this is the PETN, divided by the 11 moles total for my reactants. And the, this is reactants to the 1.16. And I get that this is 0 0.105 moles of PETN. Now I'm running out of space on my um, sample. I'll just turn the page. Um, and this point would be, I'd say, 0 0.1. 0, 0.5 moles of the PETN, and I would multiply it. They asked for the mass, so multiply it by the molar mass, which is 316.17 grams of PETN per every mole. And so when I solve for that, I get 33.2 grams of PETN. So that's a little bit different way to solve a stoichiometry problem because we don't normally think of that when we're working with solids and liquids. But this is one of the tools that we can use if, we, if we're only given the total amount. It's one of the tools that we can use to solve stoichiometry problems involving gases.